Hello and welcome back to Fourth Age Guides. Today we are looking at the battle prospects for the Empire of Harad, a very versatile faction with a large roster and the biggest unit in the mod, the Mumakil. Now, the Mumakil are not only the largest and most intimidating unit in the Fourth Age, but they are the fastest. You might not think of it, but because of their size, they move across the battlefield faster than any cavalry unit. Now, in the battlefield, I do tend to keep them grouped with cav, but it's important to remember that because of that size, if you double march them towards the enemy, they're going to get there well ahead of everybody else. So you do have to take care because getting your elephants surrounded by any unit can potentially be a problem. You especially want to keep them away from archers, especially archers with the uh, capability of using flaming arrows. Uh, absolutely keep them away from skirmishers. And so really what you want to use them is uh, or use them as is a, a, a strike unit to sort of bring a bunch of chaos and uh, sort of their wrecking ball uh, aesthetic into the middle of the enemy. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is setting them up along the flank. I want to give them lots of room because they can get stuck on even friendly troops. Um, and they can really, of course, wreak havoc with your own lines. Uh, but for the rest of the battlefield here, we've got a pretty standard lineup. We've got uh, two flanks of desert skirmishers, one on each side. Uh, behind them, we've got some Spearmen of the Serpent, a very good uh, Tier 3, I believe, spear unit. And following them up on the flanks, Corsairs of Umbar. These guys, as you will note, have no shield, and uh, they are a very solid unit in melee, but there's no sense in leaving them around the front lines to get shot. For the front lines, we do have uh, four, I think, units of Swords of Harad. These guys have javelins as well as swords, and so we want to make sure they are turned to fire at will. And then we've got various archers bringing up the front line. We've got archers of Harad. These guys can use flaming ammunition, and Corsair archers, which cannot. Uh, otherwise, we've got our cavalry pretty much grouped around the Mumakil. And we can see the enemy cab is lining up for a flank charge, and so we're getting ready to do that as well. Notice how I brought out this cab first, and we're just going to send our Mumakil right down the line into the enemy cab. And we're following that up immediately with Harrodwaith Riders and the other cavalry to really cause a lot of damage. You can see that the Mumakil did not do a lot on the charge, but it was when they stopped and started throwing their tusks around that the enemy cab started falling, and especially when we followed up with our own cavalry. So now we're using our speed to catch those Plainsman Mounted Skirmishers. Even light horse archers cannot outrun Mumikil. So uh, you can absolutely send them to, uh, to meet the fastest enemy units, but you do want to be careful to uh, pair them up with a similarly fast riders unit. The fastest units uh, in terms of cavalry that you can train, I would say it would be these uh, Harrodwaith Riders or potentially your own Mounted Skirmishers. Um, these guys are your lightest cav at tier 2, and uh, they don't have a lot of armor, but they are very speedy and a large enough unit size to be a problem uh, to just about any unit if they swarm them. So uh, that makes them a great unit to pair with the Mumakil. The Mumakil are there to shock, to frighten. Uh, they have a lot of guys who throw javelins on the towers on their backs, and so they can do a lot of damage, but it's also good to have a faster, more maneuverable unit to deal with them. Uh, sort of in tandem. Uh, otherwise, in the battlefield, I've retreated my cavalry back, and we're sort of working them around uh, to kind of wait for the Mumakil to return, and we're all going to uh, sort of work as a unit, essentially, or that's the plan, anyway. Uh, otherwise, we're doing quite well here with our caval with our infantry line, and uh, we've got archers out, we've got some corsairs out, sort of pinning down the enemy infantry. And then we'll be charging in the rest of our infantry. You can see we've already got a, uh, a good amount of routing going. But this right here, you can see the Lumikil do tend to get stuck a little bit. Uh, but when they stop to sort of throw their tusks, that's when you can get a lot of kills going. So you do want to keep them moving ideally. And uh, it is a little risky having them out here because, as you can see, there are some archers sending some fire arrows into my men. And if they turn on the Mumikil, it's only going to take a few volleys to uh, bring them down and they're going to run amok. And that, of course, can be a big problem for me. So when you're using Mumakil, you always want to be ready to keep pushing with your cav and with the rest of your infantry as well. So they really do lend themselves to a pretty aggressive uh, battle style. 
Um, in terms of the other units here, I think I had a unit of, that's right, Umbar Guard. So this is your best spear unit in some ways. Uh, they're a smaller unit size than your Spearmen of the Serpent, but they do have better stats and they have a, uh, a sort of an encouragement or a, uh, it's not rallying, but it's a, basically a morale bonus to nearby troops. At this point, we get everybody on the run, though, so we're pretty much all set. I do like to save these guys for, for going head-to-head -head with uh, the, the best enemy cavalry, uh, but your Spears of the Serpent work really well also. Honestly, Harad is a pretty straightforward faction on the battle map. Uh, you've got, a, a, as we said in the campaign video, a great mix of infantry, cavalry, and archers, and uh, the special units here, the Mumikil, are pretty intuitive to use. You just want to make sure you don't send them too far ahead, and that, that, I would say, is the biggest risk. If you get them surrounded by enemy uh, units, or if you get them uh, susceptible to enemy fire, that's when you're going to lose them. Uh, but if you just pair them with your cav, be aggressive, uh, aim for the enemy uh, archers, and uh, you know, follow your gut, you're going to be doing pretty well with Harad. A uh, lot of fun to use these guys on the battlefield. Pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, it, it does get more challenging. Now, we were up against a, an army of Harandor, uh, which is kind of similar to what you're going to face early on. You will find a lot of their tough infantry, the Harandor armsmen, which is very uh, well-armored swordsmen. And they've got a very good cavalry unit in their bodyguard, uh, which is another thing to point out. Your own cavalry, your own bodyguard, is a pretty decent unit, but because they're horse archers, they're not the most robust. So you want to lean perhaps on your other cavalry, like we had uh, Scarlet Shields and we had the uh, Horsemen of the Harn in here. So pretty well here, clear victory. Let's go back to the uh, battle selection screen. And we can take a look at what other types of things you can expect to see in a, an army of Harad. They do get a lot of variety, not quite as much as a Dunabar, of course, uh, but you can see they've got they've got a lot going on. Harad can turn to the Shadow Cult, and if you do that by building enough Shadow Temples and enough uh, high-tier Shadow Temples, you'll notice that your roster does change. So pretty much everything, uh, like I think from Spearman of the Serpent upwards, from Tier 3 up to Tier 4, uh, will switch over to a Cultic version. Uh, so that means you will lose uh, your Spearman of the Serpent, you will lose your Archers of the Harad, uh, your Scarlet Shields, but you're going to gain things like uh, the Shadow Riders, uh, let's see, uh, potentially Axes of the Shadow if you build the right uh, cultic building, um, Grons Man, we'll talk about these in more detail later. Let's first look at the native roster. At its basic level, uh, you start with Footmen of the Harad, extremely basic, they are Spearmen. They do get a bonus fighting Riders, which is nice, uh, but you're not going to want to send them against uh, high tier riders uh, or at least you're not going to expect them to withstand a charge you can actually use these guys aggressively a bit better than you can use them defensively if that makes sense so don't set up a line of them and expect them to hold against even enemy cavalry what you want to do instead is make sure that they are attacking and make sure they are supported by other better troops you know, you can use them to temporarily pin an enemy unit while you're sending cavalry or flankers around, but don't expect great things. Now, if you are in uh, Harandor regions or uh, regions that are kind of outside the desert, shall we say, you'll find Plainsman Skirmishers uh, also at Tier 1. But in other parts of the map where you start, you will find Desert Skirmishers. You'll notice that these units are identical except for the charge and defense, and in both of those, the Desert Skirmishers are superior. Uh, so these guys, I, I, I don't know if there's any, um, any real advantages to bringing the Plainsman Skirmishers. It's just that this is the unit you are likely to find in certain regions. And in other regions, you'll find these. Uh, the big difference is lack of a shield for the Plainsman Skirmishers. So I would definitely train Desert Skirmishers as a, uh, a garrison troop. They're going to be pretty useful. Uh, but on the battlefield that you just saw... Um, I was spending a lot of time micromanaging my cavalry, not too much time with ranged stuff. At higher tiers, though, you will have pretty effective ranged units. At tier 2, you will find red sand archers throughout most of your territory. Um, and this is, this is a really cheap, very effective 
archer unit. Now they're not going to be good at all in melee, uh, but get four units of these or so and, and you're going to be in a pretty good position. Um, depending on where you are training and what you have built, you may also find a couple of other archer units. Uh, Archers of Harad are your basic, I think it's tier 3, and these are a bit more robust. You can see they've got a considerably higher defense, um, a higher attack, uh, and a bit better missile attack as well, delivering as much damage with their arrows as your skirmishers do with their javelins. So that's pretty significant. They can also use flaming missiles, which is uh, going to be effective against enemy morale. But honestly, I tend not to use that feature too much. Maybe some of you can tell me when you think it's best to use flaming arrows, but I... Um, I find it's better just to, you know, shoot the enemy most of the time and, and aim for kills. Uh, but I, I do understand that there is a morale effect to using flaming ammunition. So uh, sometimes what I'll do is just put a single unit on flaming ammo and hope for the best. Uh, but I haven't really experimented with it too much. Corsair archers are available in coastal settlements where you have a Corsair stronghold uh, specialization building. You're also going to need some... Um, uh, some certain military infrastructure. Uh, the Corsair Stronghold will give your archers a better experience, so it's uh, it's unlikely that you're going to see these guys too far inland, except for the ones that you begin with. Uh, but they are useful as you conquer up the coast, because you'll be able to train them in a lot of different places. And they're, they're pretty substantial as well. They actually have a better defense um, than your Archers of Harad. That's going to be down to defense skill, not armor. So they're pretty vulnerable to missiles, more vulnerable than your Archers of Harad will be. Uh, but they can uh, serve somewhat as a hybrid unit. They've got short swords as a melee weapon. And so you might consider them as uh, cheap flankers as well as archers. That just about does it for your native archers. Um, otherwise, at Tier 2, you will find cavalry in the Harad Waith Riders. Again, we talked about in the Far Harad guide video that these guys are sort of an underestimated unit, I think, or at least I underestimated them, uh, because they don't have spears, uh, they don't have armor to speak of, uh, and they are not really hardy in melee, but they actually perform better than you might think. If you have a lot of them, and they are the largest unit size of cavalry that you can train, and you have a couple of units working together, or you pair them with, say, a Mumikil unit or some other cav, they're going to do really surprisingly well. Uh, in terms of stats, they're not that far off from the um, Horsemen of the Harnen, which you'll find at the higher, the next highest tier. Of course, they're not going to have uh, quite as good charge, of course, and they're not going to be as robust in melee, but they're going to still get the job done most of the time. Uh, Horsemen of the Harnen, I would reserve these for killing enemy uh, cavalry, powerful enemy cavalry, uh, killing the enemy general, whereas you're going to be more comfortable sending Harrodwaith riders uh, to enemy uh, archers, skirmishers, those types of things, or mobbing enemy units of any type. But these guys are really a very effective uh, kind of strike force. In Harandor, specifically, you'll find uh, Plainsman Mounted Skirmishers. Actually, you will also find these along the coasts in Umbar as well. That's sort of a plains region. It's not really the desert. Uh, so you can find these guys there, I believe, at Tier 2. And they are a very interesting unit, but they do take some getting used to. Um, you'll definitely learn to use these guys if you play Harandor, because they are uh, one of your cheapest and most effective units if you if you use them right. But they're basically a mounted skirmisher unit, except that they have a little shield, and uh, and they also can be pretty effective in melee because they've got a decent uh, unit size. If you use the javelins, keep them out of range for a while, and then charge in with a bunch of units, you'll you'll be fairly surprised at what they can uh, do. Most of the time, I would save these for attacking uh, heavy infantry. Uh, units that you can stay out of the range of. Otherwise, keep them away from melee for the most part. Other cavalry, I know we're sort of going haphazardly here, but uh, keeping with the theme of cav, I guess, for now we can look up uh, towards your Scarlet Shields. This is, I would say, tier 3 or 4. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty significant unit, so they cause fear. Uh, they can form a wedge, which is uh, pretty rare. Your other units... Uh, can't do that. Yeah, so your um, your Horsemen of the Harnen cannot, your Herodwaith Riders cannot. Uh, most cavalry uh, does not have that ability, so it's somewhat unique there. I believe it enhances the attack stat, um, but uh, again, that's not a, a formation I use a lot. 
but it might it might be of use to you. I know that it is useful just in terms of moving your troops through or around enemy formations to avoid getting caught by them. Uh, it's easier to have them in a wedge formation than in a big block. And so if you have a lot of units in a wedge, you might also get a lot of charge bonus on a single unit. Um, but I, I tend not to use it very much. In any case, you'll find these extremely effective. They're very strong, good armor, uh, spears for a good charge effect. Not as fast as your other cav, but they don't necessarily need to be. When they catch stuff, uh, they're going to be... Uh, they're, whatever they catch is going to be afraid, whether it's infantry or cavalry. Uh, and is liable to die very quickly. So a very strong unit. Now these guys are quite similar to a specialization building unit that you can train. I believe it's at the Infor Inqu Inquisition Network or the Enforcers Network. Um, and this is a uh, these are Inquisition Enforcers. So this is sort of a specialized uh, cavalry unit for Harad. It's not cult specific, so you can train this whether you are cultic or not. These guys are different in that they have a battle standard. Uh, so in addition to frightening the enemy, just like your Scarlet Shields do, these guys also encourage their allies, encourage your own troops that are nearby. So uh, very good unit overall, uh, good morale, good armor, do recommend them. I think that just about does it for cavalry. Um, we will look at cult specific stuff uh, sort of separately. But since we're in the area, let's talk about the Serpent Black. So this is your bodyguard unit. It is a horse archer hybrid bodyguard. It is, of course, uh, mounted, so that gives it some mobility, but they are quite slow compared to other cavalry. They do frighten the nearby enemy, which is good, and they have um, you know, the, the ability to shoot at range, which is also good. They have swords, and they don't have shields, which is less good. So they're not going to be great in melee. You want to support them with other cavalry, and you might want to keep them back from, uh, fr from the fight more as an encouragement to your other troops um, rather than getting them uh, caught up in melee uh, too quickly. So I would tend to use these a bit more cautiously. They can be very vulnerable to enemy cavalry charges, especially when it's spear-armed cavalry that's charging into them. And of course, they can be vulnerable when fighting enemy infantry uh, of certain types, so clearly keep them away from spearmen. Um, but when they're used with other cavalry, even a unit like Harrodwaith Riders to sort of take the brunt of the, of the damage, they can help to push an enemy into a rout. Uh, and so they, they, they can be pretty effective. The problem with them as horse archers, though, is as a bodyguard unit, they tend to have small numbers. So when it's your faction leader or your faction heir, uh, which tend to have a lot more men in the unit, they can be more effective as archers. But for the most part, you're going to want something that, that has a lot more men in the unit to lay down a lot more substantial arrow fire. Okay, moving back into infantry for a moment. We only so far have looked at the very first tier. Uh, at tier 2 for your infantry, you will find Swords of Harad. This is a... Uh, this is a ridiculous unit. They are very good, and uh, they're they're not they're not super cheap, but they are certainly affordable for Harad. You're not going to have any trouble with your economy. Um, the issue with them, or the 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 good thing and the bad thing, depending on how you look at it, is that they have javelins with them, and uh, if you set them up to fire at will, they're going to throw a couple of javelins, and that's going to do a lot of damage. the The downside, well, it's not really a downside for you. It's that there is a I guess it's a bug in Rome Total War where units with javelins like this, like like say the Hastati from, from Vanilla, can keep throwing their javelins in melee, and it, it looks a little odd, and there's nothing you can do about it uh, if, if you are facing this type of unit. That makes them extremely dangerous uh, when you are fighting against them. Uh, so, you know, you can look at it as a good thing when you're playing them, um, but uh, but it does it does make things fairly easy for Harad. I also hear, though I have not verified this myself, that the auto calc does tend to favor uh, this unit, and I can kind of see why because they've got a great missile attack and they've got a good defense, um, and so on paper they're very strong. Now in practice they can be charged by cavalry and uh, and quickly rout. But that doesn't need to happen, and especially if you are playing them, you'll be supporting them with all other types of units, so you, they will not just be sitting passively and, and, and taking an enemy cav charge. Uh, so a very good unit, four or so in an army, is, is going to be uh, pretty decent, and then you can surround them with some more uh, heavy stuff. Let's go up 
the tiers, uh, Spearman of the Serpent, uh, great unit. I think this is tier three. This is, again, it doesn't look like it has many frills, of course. It's just a, a spear unit, but it's a significant upgrade for your footman of Harad. And so this is really worth training. They've got a good defense, better than the swords. Uh, they've got a good attack, as good as the swords uh, uh, of Harad. And uh, so they can kind of do it all. Uh, and in, in that sense, they're maybe you could say emblematic, emblematic of the entire faction's roster. You can kind of do everything uh, as Harad, and the Spearmen of the Serpent do a lot of that double duty. They can hold against heavy infantry for a good long time. Uh, they can go against enemy cavalry very well, so very robust unit all around. Uh, in your capital, and um, I, yeah, I guess this would be limited to, to Umbar itself, although honestly I haven't looked uh, elsewhere. You can train Umbar Guard. You do start with a unit of the unique palace guard, which is essentially a version of this that cannot be uh, trained, only retrained. Umbar guard are very solid. Uh, they do not have as many men per unit, of course, but they make up for that with their improved stats. Very considerable defense here of 32 compared to the 23 of your Spearman of the Serpent. So this is where you, you find a unit that is really very capable of standing against even Dunedainic troops. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and holding out for quite a while. They've got spears, um, they've got a battle standard as well to inspire nearby troops, and so that is just another way that you're going to help keep your own men in the fight. So <clears throat> one thing that we haven't really mentioned yet is morale. Now you do have a few options for dealing with enemy morale by using uh, Scarlet Shields, Mumikil, or your bodyguard, or Inquisition Enforcers to attack the enemy's morale, right? Because these are all fear-causing units. But you also have a couple of ways that you can bolster your own unit's morale, and you've got, of course, your bodyguard to help with that, but also Umbar Guard and Inquisition Enforcers. So you might consider that. Typically, Haradrian unit's morale is fairly low, so any advantage you can get to keep your men in the field is going to be helpful. All right, I think in terms of native troops... Uh, that just about does it, but now as we talk about moving beyond your initial borders, um, we might talk about some of your specialization units. So this, this I guess, would be considered a native unit, the Corsairs of Umbar. These can be trained uh, pretty much from the start of the game in your capital and anywhere uh, along the coast that you've built the requisite buildings. Uh, they are a, a solid unit, but again, I would tend to keep them back from the front lines just because you don't want them to take arrow fire, and then you can charge them in on their own terms. Elsewhere, you can find, uh, not too far from your homelands, in fact, uh, some very good units. Men of Far Harad are trainable in the southern settlements along your border. There is the, the faction of Far Harad is your southeastern neighbor. And if you take any of their settlements, you can eventually build up to Men of Far Harad. This is another fear-causing unit. They are very, very low armor, very aggressive, uh, but, uh, but don't expect them to sort of stand in the battle line for too long. It's nice to have some of these units just for that extra fear effect, um, and especially if you're fighting in a desert or over in the east in Khand, potentially, they're really good against infantry. The problem, though, is in places where, uh, where they're going to be the most effective, that is, in the deserts, infantry is not usually the thing you're worried about, and if it is, you usually have other ways of dealing with it. So, for example, against Far Harad, you'll find archers are going to be your best friend. You'll just be able to shoot them down because they tend to train units like this or units like your own, which have fairly low armor. Um, and against tougher factions like the Dunedain, you're probably not going to be fighting them in the desert, so these guys are not going to get that combat bonus. Now, they'll still frighten the nearby enemy infantry, but so will your Scarlet Shields, which are a much stronger unit all around. So it might not be um, it might not be worth training these guys to take them far afield. It certainly can be fun to do so, though, in an RP sense. Um, let's see other native troops. Okay, in Harandor, you will find these Harandor armsmen. So these are a very very strong uh, sword infantry unit. Uh, in some ways, the polar opposite of the men of Far Harad. Uh, Harandor is your northern neighbor. Of course, you're going to be conquering up there for your victory conditions, and eventually, in those territories, you will find Harandor armsmen. So these are almost a Dunedainic level uh, infantry unit. So definitely train up these if you plan to be fighting against uh, against your enemies in Gondor. So just a very solid unit all around. 
Uh, further afield, you'll find units like Vassal Macemen. These are available in Mordor, around the Sea of Nern specifically. Another very similar, uh, you know, strong armored Dunedainic type unit. These guys can actually make a shield wall, and their maces are effective against armor. Armor piercing is something that Harad does tend to lack. Uh, so I think this is the only unit we've seen so far that offers it. Um, and uh, and that might be reason for you to conquer over into Nern. I have to admit, though, I've never done that as Harad. Um, I've, uh, I've just not seen it necessary to go into that part of the world. Part of the problem is strategically you're going to be uh, finding a very open border to the east with Rune, but depending on how you go, it might be worth taking. Uh, let's see, in Dwarven Settlements, if you have uh, gone cultic, I believe, you will find stone cutters. This is a two-handed unit, uh, two-handed sword unit. Very good armor, defense of 33, and a, and a good charge for infantry. So they're going to be um, uh, an, an interesting unit. Again, I have not done this as Harad. Dwarven settlements are very far away for you. The closest one, I would say, is Nereg Zagil, right near the Sea of Rune. And that's quite the haul. You're going to find public order problems starting to kick in that far from your, from your homelands. Uh, and it's going to be tough to find a good capital that, um, that, that keeps everybody happy. So might be an option for you, but I have not done it yet myself. Let's clear up the space here. So we've looked pretty much at the native roster and... Um, and I guess we can start looking at the cultic side of things, as well as a few other specialization buildings. Uh, before we go to the cult, though, I guess we can look at some other vassal units. Vassal Axemen are available in Rune. This is a Warcry-capable axe unit. It's basically Rune's Tier 2 unit, uh, but a smaller unit size, 80 instead of the 90, I think, that Rune gets. Uh, again, this is a nice perk for conquering into Rune, but nothing to go there specifically for. If you do go to the cult, though, cultists are a cult unique unit, as you might expect. Uh, their chanting helps improve the morale of your units, and so as such, they can help bolster uh, one of your slight weaknesses. Because again, some of your most, um, most effective units are fairly low in terms of morale. Another interesting cultic unit is Black Numenorians. Uh, Two-handed swords, very good armor, and this is actually a bodyguard or a family member unit as indicated by the little uh, signet ring here in the upper right corner of the unit card. That means that if you want to train a family member, you can have Black Numenorians instead of, say, the Serpent Black. It might be worth training this unit, I suppose, if you're planning on doing... Um, uh, I don't know, fighting potentially against the Dunedain or fighting against an infantry heavy faction where you want to sort of cut into the enemy ranks rather than holding back. Uh, but these guys do not cause fear, so do be aware of that. They're not as mobile, of course, as your own native bodyguards being an infantry unit, uh, but it's kind of nice to have some around as a prestige unit. Gronzman. Okay, this is something I might consider. It does require you to conquer up to Mordor into Barad Eden. That's the settlement right near, uh, right, right to the east of um, of Mount Doom. So if you take that settlement and tech it up, and you are cultic, then you could train Grand's men. So these are bigger than normal uh, warriors, uh, war hammers, shields, great armor. So uh, a scary and very effective unit. Good stamina, which is kind of interesting. So they'll be able to run around the field and not get tired. So very good stuff. This unit here, the Vassal Pikeman, is not cult specific. This is a unit you get in Dunland, believe it or not. So if you are to go all the way up to Dunland, you could get pikes. Now, you don't have to go too far into Dunland proper. You can get up along the coastline, I believe, uh, just south of uh, Lond Dare. Um, so Lim Phallus, I believe, would be the first settlement you could train Vassal Pikeman if you're going by sea. Uh, so, I don't know, would it be worth going all the way up there to get a shieldless, relatively low defense pike unit? Um, maybe not, but maybe. I mean, they do offer some interesting differences from the Spearmen of the Serpent. They're going to be a lot lighter, of course. They may be faster. Uh, they are going to be very effective against riders. Their defense is a lot lower, and their attack is lower, and their charge is a bit lower, but I'm thinking these guys are going to be cheaper. Uh, so, in any case, it, it might be an interesting unit to see how they perform. I'd be a little concerned about the lack of armor and the lack of a shield. Uh, your cultic basic stuff is going to include Swords of the Shadow, uh, Spears of the Shadow, and Shadow Riders. 
you will also find uh, axes of the shadow. This, I believe, will require you to train a, a cult a specific specialization building, cultic scions of Harad. Uh, but these are, are going to be essentially your basic cultic roster in addition to the cultists themselves, in that you can train them pretty much anywhere once you have um, once you have switched over to the cultic faction. You'll get them right out of your regular barracks. So they are going to be replacing some of your upper tier units. Now, lose you, you'll still have Swords of Harad. You're not going to lose these guys. But you're going to be losing, say, Spearmen of the Serpent, Scarlet Shields. Uh, is it worth it? I, I really do tend to prefer the native rosters most of the time. Uh, but these units do offer some advantages. Um, one advantage of this unit is that they are effective against armor. And so if you have not gone uh, as far away as, say, Barad E. Den or as far away as Nern to pick up those mace units, uh, you could get Axes of the Shadow basically anywhere uh, if you've got the right buildings. And then you'd have a, a pretty solid anti armor unit. So that might be worth considering. Swords of, uh, Shadow Riders are better in terms of armor um, than your. Uh, than your Scarlet Shields. They are considerably better, but they are not frightening. And so they're, they're, they're going to be uh, missing out on that special boost. Uh, Spears of the Shadow, again, are going to be better in terms of armor uh, than your Spearman of the Serpent, but worse in terms of attack, lower um, unit size, more expensive. So it is a very much a trade-off. Swords of the Shadow, though, do fill a role that your native roster outside of Harondor doesn't really fill. Um, so these guys are, are basic swordsmen, uh, but in terms of attack, uh, they are a little worse, actually, than the, uh, than the Harondor armsmen, and their defense is the same. They've got a bit worse charge as well. Reasonable morale, uh, very well armored, but um, I, I would say probably the armor value of these guys, it doesn't break it down here, but probably the armor value of Swords of the Shadow is going to be a little higher than that of Harondor Armsmen, so maybe that's going to help them again in, in certain types of fights, maybe against missiles. Um, but smaller unit size, I'm not sure which unit is, is going to be more expensive here. Well, actually, we can see in terms of recruitment, 1680 versus 1900, so these guys are actually a little bit cheaper. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be true in terms of upkeep as well, which is what really counts in campaign. Uh, but the difference is that you could train these pretty much anywhere. So if you are cultic, if you have military development, you could get Swords of the Shadow. You don't have to be in Harondor. Uh, so this is a, a more easy unit to get to all of the corners of your realm. So again, going to the cult um, <clears throat> is nice for, for some units, but you are going to lose some of the native flair, in my opinion. So Harad is a very stylish faction, and I like to keep it, uh, I like to keep it that way for the most part. Uh, okay, what else have we not talked about here? I think uh, one or two other units remain to be discussed. Bows of the Shadow, this is again a very rare unit uh, that I never see in campaign because it requires you to conquer in elven territory. Uh, for Harad, that's going to be pretty far away, as you might imagine. Uh, Lorien or Southern Greenwood is going to be the closest regions to you, and to do that, you're going to have to go north of Gondor, up the Anduin. It's, it's going to be a long trip. Um, this is a really good unit. And if you've gone cultic, um, it's going to help replace your loss of archers of Harad. Uh, so, you know, that's something to consider. They also have uh, two-handed axes as a, a, a melee weapon. So uh, kind of a hybrid and uh, something you, you definitely might consider if you want to go fighting the elves, which can be a fun, uh, fun diversion for Harad. Uh, I think we also have just one unit and then the Mumikil themselves, of course, which we've seen in battle already, so probably don't need to say any more about these guys. Uh, Ballistas of the Shadow Cult though, there, though, this is one unit that you might uh, you might consider in terms of, of being an advantage for the cult. You do not get any siege weapons as Harad uh, at all. So if, if you are sticking with your native roster, you're going to lose this. Now, you will have Mumikil. You start with a unit of Mumikil at the beginning of the campaign. You can tech up to Mumikil over the course of the campaign and get them whenever you want. And you can send Mumikil against walls and gates and things. The problem is going against stone walls. And if you're going against the stone walled gate, you're probably going to get your Mumikil shot up by ballistas and get routed. Uh, or worse, run amok or just killed outright. So safer to have some ballistas if you don't want to send rams or siege towers against an enemy uh, fortress, but honestly, 
if I were sieging a settlement, I would probably prefer to have more attack-oriented units um, rather than spend a unit slot on ballistas. But maybe that's just me. So this is the, uh, the full roster for Harad outside of uh, a few things such as local levies and so on. But it's a very versatile roster. You might think of the cultic units as being more, more defensive and maybe more siege-oriented if you wanted to, to look at it that way in terms of assaulting a settlement and not worrying about taking so many losses. Um, but I, I prefer, generally speaking, the native non-cultic roster of Harad. It gives you a ton of variety, and uh, although they're not arguably as strong man-for-man man as your Dunedainic neighbors, um, it does give you plenty of options to deal with that problem when you do face it. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great day, and stay tuned for other guides in the future. Take care.